all you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol Baskin from Big Cat Rescue. Okay. COVID-19 pandemic has affected all of our lives. The fear and uncertainty caused by the pandemic has increased stress and anxiety and public health actions such as social distancing has caused people to feel isolated and lonely. Tools and resources for remaining motivated and positive during this time will help in coping with the stress in a healthy way. And to do that, I would like to introduce the SLW Destination IP Virtual Summit. Buckle up, Buttercup. It's going to be a wild ride. Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone to uh, uh, the first first presentation of the Destination IP Virtual Summit, uh, Keeping Motivated, uh, Resources and Tools for Coping in the Pandemic. Uh, so I think we're just going to, obviously everyone's been uh, impacted by this in a variety of ways, uh, stress, uh, uh, you know, lack of, you know, the normal day-to-day -day that we, we typically have. I think a lot of people have probably fallen off the wagon in terms of uh, staying fit and, and getting out to the gym. So I think, uh, or, you know, we thought that kind of a fun presentation to start things off to maybe go over some tips and ideas for staying productive, you know, productivity tips, like how to, how to get your virtual office um, set up and, and running efficiently. And then also just on a more personal level, kind of you know, how to maintain mental and physical health. And, uh, you know, in, in light of that, we have a, a guest presenter at the end that we'll, we'll uh, introduce later um, to provide some tips and resources to keep everyone in shape. Okay. Let's go to the next slide, please. All right, so um, just before we, we get started, just wanted to, to let everyone know that we will be recording this presentation um, we can always, um, you know, access it later. It'll be on our website, um, and there will also be. Uh, um, we're happy to email the slides to anyone that's interested. Um, also, if you if you have any questions at all at any time, feel free to uh, to enter your questions um, into the to the the Q and A section at the bottom. We'll try to answer those during, or maybe we'll answer them afterwards. Um, and also, we encourage everyone to follow us uh, on LinkedIn. Um, we can find out more information. Great. All right, next slide, please. So yeah, like, like I said, so uh, topics of the presentation, we're going to discuss general challenges that people have gone through um, dealing with COVID-19 and the, you know, corresponding lockdowns. And uh, in light of that, then guidance for how to work virtually, some tips to get your office set up. And then finally, and I think uh, uh, probably the most interest is going to be just you know, some, some tools and resources for managing stress, including uh, some, you know, at home workout or, or options related to that. So next slide. Okay. You want me to do this yeah, sure. Yeah. Great. So just, um, we just want to start out with a, just a little overview of how the pandemic has affected all of us. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of fear and worry about, you know, the uh, uncertainty of what's going to kind of go on with, with, the, with our worlds. Um, as far as the economy and everything like that, you know, fear about our, our personal health, those of our loved ones. Um, you know, but beyond that, right, it's, it's also affected all of our routines, right? You know, the gyms are closed. We're not able to go into the office. Um, and, you know, that's, that's affected, you know, the, the things that we were normally doing to stay healthy, um, you know, our sleep schedules, you know, childcare is, is another thing that's, you know, greatly affected us all. So it's, it's, it's led to a lot of challenges that I think have greatly affected all of our productivity on, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, yeah, I think, I think for me, like on a personal level, it's like we have uh, uh, both my wife and I work full time and um, with, without having access to daycare. And then, you know, with the initial social distancing guidelines, we were kind of, you know, it's like us and many other people were forced to, you know, go back and forth, uh, share time taking care of the kids. And, and that obviously made it impossible to dedicate as much time as we could have to work. So there was, there would be really no way 
to have the exact same level of productivity. So I think that in light of that, it's kind of important that we make little changes to our routine and adapt as best we can in order to thrive as best we can. Uh, so next slide. Yeah. Yeah, so, go ahead, ahead. please. And so just kind of piggybacking off that, right, you know, um, a couple ways that you could, you know, deal with the pandemic, right, is one, um, to create a, a functional virtual work environment, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. And then also, you know, learn some ways, you know, to manage the stress that kind of comes with it. So we're going we're to be covering that now. Next slide, please. So yeah, general challenges, obviously, as we talked about, you can't go to the office anymore. You're not supposed to meet with coworkers or clients. And I think most of the time, it, I, most clients have been very hesitant to uh, schedule time for any kind of in-person meeting, even if it's outside. Um, and then being forced to work from home, there are the obvious distractions, there's kids, um, there's, there's uh, uh, you, you know, changes in your routine, you can't go to the gym anymore. Uh, I've been eating a lot of takeout or I was eating a lot of takeout for a while just because there was no other way to, to uh, prepare meals. And then as a result, you yourself are less available. And uh, I think since everyone is basically dealing with the same thing, everyone is less available. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not just our personal availability that's been affected, but similarly, right, you know, it, it's hard enough to find your own free time, then let alone, you know, schedule with someone else to, to work together and collaborate. And so that's, that's affecting our, just our collaboration and, and work environment. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so, you know, here we, we've got a few tips um, just for creating a more effective virtual office, um, you know, working from home. So um, the first one that we have listed here is just kind of get dressed. And, and what we mean by that is, you know, try to recreate your normal work routine from before. Um, I think we've all kind of gotten caught, especially early on and, you know, just wearing, you know, our, our comfortable at home clothes and, you know, it kind of gets hard to, to differentiate when you're at the office, when you're at home and, and kind of create that distinction. So, you know, one way to, 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 kind of create the environment that you're still at work is right, put on your normal work attire or, or something other than what you're normally wearing at home, um, just to create that distinction between, hey, now I'm, I'm going into my work world, right? Um, you know, another, another thing that, you know, if, if it's possible is to try to designate a workspace or, or office at home. Um, you know, obviously if you have a separate room that you can designate as a, as a home office, that would be the best. But even if, if space is limited, you know, trying to create some area in a, in a corner, um, where you know, it can be your designated workspace where not only do you have your things to be comfortable and, and work productively, but also to kind of signal to those around you that, hey, I'm at work right now, you know, even though I'm in the living room, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm technically in the office and then, you know, kind of helps, you know, define that separation between work and home. Um, so, yeah, and, and in that same uh, line of thought, you know, it's important that you kind of try to minimize distractions as much as you can and then also kind of create transitions into and out of work. You, you know, maybe have, have a morning workout first that, uh, you know, you leave your house or to go on a run and then when you come back, it's kind of like you're walking into your office now. You're not just coming back home or, uh, you know, use your uh, chores that you have to do around the house as kind of opportunities to break the day up. Maybe use the laundry as a timer um, to transition between tasks. Uh, yeah, and I think, by doing all that stuff, it kind of provides you with a little bit more routine. And I think that kind of just lends itself to, you know, forcing you to be more uh, productive and a little bit more efficient with your time. And with, and with the, with the transitions, you know, um, one thing I found that that's helped with doing the transition is just, you know, when, when a time comes from, you know, watching the kids to going into my work mode, you know, I kind of just say goodbye to them all, just not so much to signal to me that I'm, I'm leaving one environment and going to the other, but also to kind of send a clear message to them, like, hey, now it's, it's, it's you know, I'm moving into work environment, so they also kind of know that, you know, not to, not to distract me or to, to bother me and things like that. So um, it seems like a simple kind of silly thing, but I, I found that it works a lot, you know, just to kind of help create that, that routine and that separation from one, one environment to the other. Um, yeah. Another tip, right, is to, to communicate. Um, and what we mean by that is that, you know, if you're having issues, if there's, if there's things with working from home that are, that are causing problems or you're not able to accomplish certain things, you know, a great way to deal with that is to, to communicate that to others. You know, I mean, everyone's dealing with these same problems. So, you know, they're understanding and I think it's kind of better to 
you know, express that early on rather than kind of try to fix things if they're not working. Uh, so next slide. Okay, so I think uh, one big part of maintaining productivity is obviously going to be just reducing stress for yourself. And part of that is going to be mental health. And, and I think um, I want to say that this is probably more related to just staying connected, like uh, outside of actual issues that someone may have, I think. But in the context of, you know, seclusion and isolation and you know, dramatic changes in your routine and your day-to-day -day and the added responsibility that you may have, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. It's really easy to, um, you know, kind of lose track of what's going on. So it's, it's just really crucial right now that everyone takes this seriously and, and takes some little, like, little extra steps to make sure that you, you know, you're doing well um, mentally and emotionally. And to do that, you know, I think, uh, oh, we can go to the next slide, I think. So one tip obviously is just to stay connected. And this isn't just with coworkers um, in the form of like virtual meetups, which are, are great. You know, I think the San Jose office has been really good about doing that. We have a lot of, uh, you know, coffee meetings, which were always really fun. Um, but I think also, you know, the, you know, with Peloton, I think Shepley has been doing a lot of Peloton riding yeah. uh, with coworkers. And then also just kind of in your normal day-to-day -day life, like actually just interacting with people, like talking to your neighbors. Um, I think when these lockdowns first started, I actually met my neighbors for the first time. Like it was just like we were living in the same neighborhood day-to-day, -day, but nobody spoke with each other or ever said hi. But now that we're all forced to be outside kind of in the same area for the entire day, you know, we've, I finally met these people. And now I actually have like a pretty close relationship with them. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, so I think just in general, taking the advantage or taking the opportunity to go out and actually talk to people that uh, are around you and you have the opportunity to speak with is just going to, you know, I think it'll trend you toward a better mood and put you in a better position that you're not constantly, you know, stressed out and worried maybe. Yeah, it, it, and it keeps you connected to the people around you. Um, you know, one thing I found with the virtual workouts, you know, we've scheduled, uh, you know, a recurring Peloton ride here with, with people in the office and, you know, even though, you know, the interaction is really minimal, right? I mean, you, you're kind of just on the same ride and, you know, you're not really next to each other talking during it. Just having like that activity, um, you know, in common and, you know, something that we've done together that we can kind of talk about, it, it does build like a, it feels like we're hanging out. And then it's, it's something I look forward to every week. And, and I think it really um, keeps you connected to those people that, you know, now I haven't actually seen in person in, in months. So. Um, I found that to be very, very effective. And, you know, just to touch on some of these other points again, you know, um, it's not just about, you know, taking care of ourselves and remaining connected for our own personal benefit, but also, you know, looking out for those around us, um, you know, our neighbors, just to see if they're struggling or, you know, try to lend a hand, helping hand if, if they need some help. So I think that's the importance of reaching out. Uh, so next slide. Yeah, so again, uh, in the uh, line of mental health, just take breaks, take, you know, schedule time even to stretch or meditate, maybe start the day off with some meditation, um, schedule a walk, literally put it on your Outlook calendar, um, block out some time to get out of the house, do anything. Uh, it's just, I think, important to continue living right now, not to, obviously not to go out and, you know, go to parties and raves or whatever, but just actually take some time to go out of your house and do things, um, go to the park, uh, you know, take, take some time to go on a hike, go grocery shopping, whatever you can do. Yeah. And, and, and not just, you know, physical breaks, but also, you know, mental breaks. And that's, you know, referring, I think, to just the, the amount of, of news that's, that's all around us right now with social media and everything that's going on. And there's a, there's a lot of stress out there, you know, just talking about the pandemic. Just and stop listening to the on. news. No more news. Yeah. So, I mean, I think taking some breaks where you're, you're getting away from, from all that, right. Disconnecting um, from the internet, you know, whether it should be reading a book or you know, going to walk in and leaving the phone at home, just something to, to really kind of take your mind off of everything. Um, exercise is obviously a really great way to do that as well. Yeah. Uh, so next slide. Now we obviously have a lot more free time at home, kind of we're forced to have free time at home. So I think this is a great opportunity to
do something new, um, like learn a new language or take up a, a new hobby that maybe you didn't, you know, previously have time to do. Um, I'm going to start mountain biking. I'm really excited about that. Uh, I think if you have any home improvement projects, this is probably a good time to, you know, get on those things. It's just whatever you can do um, to keep things interesting, I think. Yeah, try, try new hobbies. I know a lot of people have. I know there was a lot of bread baking and, you know, bikes are selling yeah, like crazy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is advice I think most people know, but um, it, it is a good idea. I, I personally have, um, you know, been working towards some, some goals and things that, you know, I, I had put off just because I have more time at home now. So my, I found it to be very productive. Um, okay, so next slide. And this is going into the. Yeah, so this is, I think, the uh, uh, most interesting part of this presentation, at least. Uh, so, yeah, more interesting than us, at least. So, I think uh, uh, a big part of maintaining stress and reducing stress, and, or I guess, maintaining productivity is reducing stress. And I think a really big, important part of that is staying healthy. And that includes basically taking time to get out and exercise and, and spend some time, um, you know, actually getting out of the house, not sitting down, um, or maybe staying in the house to just move, move around a little bit. Um, I think that, that this is something that has probably impacted the most people since they've lost access to gyms. And I think many people don't really know how to do this stuff on their own anyways. So you know, when they don't have access to a gym that they would normally go to, um, they, or the fact that they're maybe eating out more, it's sort of quick and easy to like, fall off the bandwagon. So um, in view of that, we can go to the next slide. So it's my pleasure to introduce a, a good friend of mine, uh, Ryan Fisher. So Ryan is uh, probably the fittest person I've ever met in my life. But so he's the owner and founder of Chalk Performance Training and Chalk Online. So I think he's seen, and he'll speak to this, a huge surge in probably online memberships um, as a result of these, these uh, lockdowns. But just to kind of toot, toot his horn a little bit here, Ryan's accomplishments include, uh, so he qualified for the US Olympic team for skeleton and bobsled. He's been a top 20 in the world uh, CrossFit Open athlete for three consecutive years. He's got certifications in the USA Weightlifting Club and Sport Performance Coach. He's got all of these coaching certifications and he's done custom programs for uh, celebrities, corporate clients and professional athletes all over the place. So I think this, Ryan knows what he's talking about. I think it's safe to say. So um, I just want to hand it over to him. So uh, to the extent that people have questions, please feel free to pop in the Q and A, but I think just to start things off, um, you know, I think, and We've discussed this before, but I think, uh, you know, Ryan, if you uh, maybe, I think a good question to have or that many people might have is just how can people kind of get themselves, uh, is there a way to, to get exercise and stay home? Like, are, are there kind of just some uh, high level tips, at least, to get people started in terms of, of you know, getting a workout in. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, is how can you, what are some diet tips maybe like for? I think I know what to do here. Yeah. 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 So we can <laughs> stop sharing the screens now. And then. Can you, uh, can you, can you hear me just fine? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So everybody who's on here right now, I'm assuming right now you either have, you either know absolutely nothing about nutrition or exercise, because that's why you're listening, because you're like really excited to get some new information. Or maybe you were a pretty avid exerciser, if that's a word. And, um, and now your exercise routine has been modified a little bit. So what I think, I'm gonna start with the person who doesn't know as much, and then we're gonna you know, kind of evolve into the person who already has a pretty good routine and wants it to make it a little bit better. So the first thing that I absolutely agree with is managing stress and having better work work productivity is absolutely 100% associated with how you feel mentally. And that's like the biggest thing that fitness does for us is it makes us feel good mentally. So if you get out of bed and you're like, oh man, I have to go to work, or you have to like, you know, go to the kitchen table and sit at, which I'm at right now because I used to love going to my local coffee shop and now it's closed. 
and it's really, really upsetting. Um, so in order for me to be excited about the work that I have to do for the day, huge, huge fan of getting a workout in for the day. Like Aris, um, I like to ride my bike as well. He's getting into it. I think I'm probably partially the reason for that. And um, I do think that with that being said, everyone thinks of exercise as something they have to do. And when you think about it that way, it immediately sets you up for some sort of failure. So in my opinion, any, everybody can stay fit as long as they pick something that they absolutely love to do. I don't think that you absolutely have to lift weights. I don't think you have to ride your bike. I don't think you have to swim. I don't think you have to go for a walk. I think that what you should do for yourself is the thing that does make you smile for the day. It does get you excited and you are going to keep it going. If you feel like this is something that you're going to do for the next, you know, until COVID's over, I'm going to ride my bike every day and then whatever, and then it's all over and you guys stop, then you guys didn't really make a change that really was for you. You made a change that you felt like you had to do. And those are the worst changes that I like to see people do. I like them to, to do something that they really like to do. So in terms of what should I do, you should do what makes you happy. Honestly, if riding your bike every single day is going to be something that you can sustain and you can do every day, I would rather you do that than lift weights every day in the gym and you hate it. You know, like maybe you'll look better with the weights, but you're going to feel better with the bike ride, right? So that's like one thing that I think is very, very important. And then the absolute most important thing is going to be your nutrition, right? So no matter how much bike riding you do, no matter how much weightlifting you do, your nutrition is always going to be the most important factor. So with that being said, rather than me go over all sorts of nutrition stuff and you guys start falling asleep and crashing onto your pads there, I'm just going to say one simple thing. And this is one thing that I'm known for all over the world is I'm, I own something called the Earn Your Carbs Lifestyle. And I'm not going to sell it to you right now. I'm just going to give you the very, very basic principles of it. And it is to have a structured amount of fats, proteins, and carbs for the day, but keep your carbohydrate intake around your workout for the day. So now we have like a really structured day, right? We want to work out so we feel better for our, for our job and for our productivity for the day. And then when I do work out, I'm going to eat those carbohydrates for the day. So let's just say I have 100 grams of carbs to eat for the day. I'll eat 50 before, I'll eat 50 after the workout. And now all I have to worry about is how much fat and how much protein I have the rest of the day. It's actually not that hard. It's harder to actually fight off the carb craving than it is to actually hit your goals. I've changed in the last you know, couple of years with this challenge, tens of thousands of bodies, and it works for every single person who does it. And before you even spend a dollar, if you could just, just wrap your head around the fact that earning your carbohydrates is the most important thing you have to do, that will just supersede everything you know about nutrition. It makes everything so, so easy. Because otherwise, you do have to be that person who's measuring every meal. You're going to be that guy who's like kind of weird when you go out to dinner with your friends. You're going to be that guy who says, no, I don't want to do that because I'm on a diet and all that. And the reason that people are like that is because they're measuring their fats, their proteins, and their carbs for every meal. When you can just wrap your head around the fact that earn your carbs is like a lifestyle choice where you basically are just going to put those numbers around your workout, it just makes everything so much easier. So... so in terms of, oh, you have a question, Aris? Yeah, so just to kind of like guide, so, so since you don't have to weigh and measure stuff, so like, is there a way to approximate? Like if you're looking at like a piece of bread? So, I mean, I have a calculator kind of built for people because depending on what your age is and what your activity level is, because some people are literally going to be at home all day and they're pretty sedentary. And then you have the guy who's like, he doesn't work out, but he walks his dog like a mile or two, like three times a day. And he runs around with his kids in the backyard. And like, before you know it, he's actually racked up a decent amount of calories. So there's a giant difference between those two people and how many carbohydrates they get per day. So I have a calculator built into the guides that I make for people. But if I was to guesstimate for everybody, so I, I go about it in two different ways. There's, there's people who like to eat more carbohydrates in their diet. And there's people who like to eat more fats in their diet. Like if you're an eggs and baking type of guy, you're probably a higher fat type of person. But if you're someone who loves to eat like oatmeal and yogurt in the morning, you're, you're more of like that carbohydrate person. And there's nothing wrong with either one of them. I want you to understand that there's nothing wrong with either one. But you do need to choose between having a higher fat diet or having a higher carb diet so that you can cancel out one of the two so that you can stay on track to get to whatever the goals you have are. Most people's goals right now in this group is probably going to be to lose body fat. I'm probably not dealing with anyone who's like 
hey, I want to put a ton of muscle on because when you put muscle on, you're going to have to gain weight in general. So if you're not happy with the way you look right now, you're not going to be happy trying to gain. So uh, the name of the game is to just be in a caloric deficit. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to eat more protein in your diet. I have people tell me all the time, like, how much protein should I eat? And I tell them that at least your body weight in protein. And they're like, oh my God, I weigh 200 pounds. I could never eat 200 grams of protein. And my first answer is, well, you had no problem eating twice that in carbs, twice that in fat, right? That wasn't hard, right? And that's exactly why we're here. So, I mean, if I was to make you eat 200 grams of protein in chicken, you'd be like 50 grams in, you'd be like, oh, I don't want to eat anymore. But if I gave you 50 grams of carbohydrates, I mean, that's literally like one slice of pizza and you could easily polish off the rest of that pie. Yeah. That would be a problem. Um, as far as like the workout stuff, I think another thing that would be interesting to hear is, you know, you obviously have access to a gym, given you own a gym, but uh, how have your kind of workouts changed in, in view of the lockdowns? Like, have you started doing more stuff outside? Is there stuff like that that you can kind of... Kind of so I really wanted to kind of feel the effects of the whole COVID thing as a non-gym owner so that I can understand how to help my people. For those of you guys who don't know, um, in the introduction, like one of my big things is the Chalk Performance Training brand is a gym, but I also have like almost 10,000 people around the world who follow my online training app. And on that app, you know, <laughs> to be able to understand what they're dealing with, I started creating bodyweight workouts for the first time. I've always been a weightlifter. I've always been someone who loved like really hardcore conditioning with bikes and rowers and all that stuff. And since, since the, you know, the whole COVID thing, like even for me, it's affected me in terms of, you know, I have to figure out how to, you know, make, make my job. <laughs> um, what do I want to say? Like, I, I want to make sure that I can do the best I can with my job, even no matter what the scenario. So I'm learning a completely new genre of training and I've created so many different body weight workouts. And one of the biggest things that I saw that I absolutely hated about bodyweight workouts was every time I'd look on the computer for like inspiration, I'd be like, all right, let me look up some workouts so I can kind of get an idea of what people like. And then I'll kind of modify and make it my own thing. And I kept seeing these workouts where it was like, you know, 20 of this, 10 of this, and five of this. And it was like three rounds and a minute rest. And before you knew it, it was like a five minute workout. And yeah, there's some little skinny blonde girl who's like, oh my God, this is all I do. I look so good. And she's like, three crackers for the day. That's just, it's not reality. So the reality is people need to lose calories. People need to do something hard. So for me, I was like, all right, if I have to do body weight, I am going to make something that is going to make people just completely dead and drenched. And it's going to fill a good, like 30 minutes of their time, nonstop movement. So I started making tons of different body weight workouts. And I think that, you know, whether you follow my workouts or somebody else's workouts, I think it's really important for you guys to at least be moving nonstop for 20 to 30 minutes. If you're doing something that wasn't very hard for a minute or two, and then you're resting for a minute or two, and you didn't really feel like you deserved that rest break, um, you're, you're not really burning that many calories. That's, that's a good, good point, I think. And so do you have resources available, I guess, to people that do want to do bodyweight workouts? Yeah, so... My name's Ryan Fisher. <laughs> Everything I did started with a gym. So I have this website called Jim Ryan. Uh, it's kind of a cheeky little name there. So you got G-Y-M-R-Y-A-N.com. When you go on there, I have an app. I'll show you what it looks like real quick on my phone. So basically you would download and it looks like that. It tells you what you're going to be doing. And then there's a menu here. And on this menu, there's several different types of workouts. So there's body weight ones, there's ones for a whole gym, there's dumbbells only. Um, and then whenever there's a movement that you're not really too sure of, usually I put a video link on there so you guys can check it out. And worst case scenario, if there's anything on there that you don't know, you could always just search it on YouTube. But for the most part, uh, depending on how much time you have, what you have available, I have it, I have it on here. But um, yeah, I think it's really, really important for you just to pick something that, that you like to do and that is gonna be sustainable for you. And you know, even the bodyweight workouts, I can't even tell you how many people I have send me videos of them doing them with their kids because they're, you know, they're very, very basic movements, push-ups and sit-ups and squats. And sometimes it's like their, their team style. So it'll be like, 
you know, you do one burpee and two air squats and three sit-ups and four push-ups, and then I'm going to go. And then like, you know, the little kid goes and it's really, really cool. And there's, I've also had, like, if you guys are doing the Peloton thing, I have people, they'll, they'll put a zoom up and, and they'll do a team workout like that. So it'll be like, you do the, you do the work and then they do the work and you go back and forth until everybody finishes like 50 rounds mm -hmm. and it takes like 20 to 30 minutes. And that's the way some of the workouts are structured. So you actually do have a partner and do have some fun. So I've even had people, they'll do a workout with like, you know, their cousin in London or something and they live in California and it's just a really cool thing. Awesome. So let's see here. So we have a question here, Ryan. Go ahead. Um, oh, here we go. I'll put is on. what your thoughts are about taking walks? Um, we hear a lot of a lot about taking walks. How effective do you how effective do you think taking walks are? And you know, maybe are there ways to make them more effective? So it comes down to time management, right? So if you have two hours to take a walk, or maybe during your two hour walk or your hour walk, uh, you're getting work done on your phone. Then I think that's great, but you could actually spend 20 minutes uh, doing some sort of like high intensity workout and get the same effect. The big thing that makes high intensity so like popular and why people like it so much is because it has this thing called uh, post oxygen, wait, post oxygen consumption, post exercise oxygen consumption, EPOC. So what happens is when you're done working out with a super high elevated heart rate, when you're done working out, your heart rate is still elevated for a significant amount of time. So your body's still burning fat until your heart rate levels out. So when you're walking, your heart rate is pretty much slow the entire time. So it takes you an hour to burn the same amount of calories you would do in 20 minutes. And that's the reason the whole high intensity stuff got big because people like to get all of their stuff done in a shorter amount of time. Okay, we have another question. Uh, can you elaborate more on carb intake, amount and timing? So as far as timing goes, huge fan of just before and after the workout. So when I say that, the next question is, well, what does that mean? So let's just say you have 100 grams of carbs for the day, right? I'm not going to say specifically for, you know, from Aaron Winnegar. So like, let's just say, I mean, I don't want to disrespect you, but I'm just saying, let's say you weigh 100 pounds or maybe you weigh 300 pounds. I don't want to say X amount of carbs. So I'm not going to go that route, but I am going to use 100 grams as an example. So let's just say before the workout, we have... 50 grams, and then after the workout, we have 50 grams. That's one way. Another way is to eat all 100 grams after the workout. So now you look forward to the workout being over so you can have all of your carbs for the day. Um, and then some people just like to just, you know, maybe they just like a banana before the workout. So there's 25 grams, and then they just have this other 75 after. Because anything more than that banana, they feel like crap. So those are my recommendations for the carbohydrate intake. Obviously, you're going to have days where you don't work out. So now you're like, what do I do with that? And then you'll have that number and you can kind of spread that out throughout the day as you wish, or you can just have that one meal throughout the day where you're really, really, you know, excited about getting your carbs in. Another big question I'm going to get that you guys aren't even, might not bring up, but you're definitely thinking about it because it's always gets brought up, is intermittent fasting. People are always into something with intermittent fasting because it's such a hot topic right now. And I think that if you're someone who struggles losing body fat, you have a hard time eating less calories. What I think intermittent fasting is good for is to limit the amount of calories you can eat in a specific time window. So what happens is when you fast, let's say from 8 a.m. to, or no, 8 p.m. to 10 a.m. the next day, it's a 14 hour fast. It's not a long fast, but it's long enough where when you eat that next meal, you're gonna get full pretty quick. And then you only have um, so many hours until you can, you have to stop eating before the next fast comes and people who are really good at fasting and, and they use it to their advantage are typically at like a 16 hour window typically. So that leaves them an eight hour window of eating, which doesn't sound hard, but it actually is. You'd be surprised like how many little snacks you get in here and there and that add up to different amounts of calories. Typically on average, if you're eating 500 less calories per day, you'll lose a pound a week. If you're eating 500 surplus calories a day, you'll gain a pound a week. So that's how easy it is. Like you just have one little handful of almonds every day. That's like 500 calories. You know, if you have like two or three handfuls and just that alone, you don't change your diet at all. You look in the mirror and like two, three months after COVID and you're like, how the hell did I gain all this weight? And it's because those little bit of calories add up so, so fast. So let's just say that, you know, you want to start in, in, uh, intertwining the intermittent fasting thing, inter intermittent fasting thing. What I will say to you is the big reason that people do it is because they think that 
they're creating this thing called autophagy where they're basically, you know, doing anti-aging for free to themselves. And that's not necessarily true unless you're doing like two to three day fasts, like real actual fasting. So the, these intermittent fasting windows don't do any of that. It, all it really does is give you a smaller window to eat in, in which case will make you eat less calories, in which case will make you lose weight. <laughs> all the questions pop up now. How about workouts making you feel more hungry after the workout? How do you keep that from canceling out the calories burned during the workout? Well, I would say if you're hungry, you're like dying after the workout, there's a very high likelihood that you didn't hydrate yourself adequately enough during the workout and after the workout and maybe even before the workout. I can guarantee you right now that let's just, let's just get real hungry at some point today. When you get really, really hungry at some point today, it's going to happen, right? We all get hungry. I want you to drink like eight to 16 ounces of water. And I guarantee you, all of a sudden, you want to eat significantly less food. Uh, and then think about when you're not eating healthy food, when you go to the grocery store, what is the first thing you look at? It's like pieces of chocolate, like, you know, a giant piece of sugary fruit or, you know, like all of a sudden that, that, like, that salad that you had in mind, that, that really awesome salad that you knew was going to get you to your goals, all of a sudden, it doesn't sound so appetizing at all because you're dying, Right. And ideally, you just, you know, drink a little bit of fluids, calm down for a second, uh, and have a bite of something that's, you know, realistic towards what your goals are. And before you know it, all those aspirations that you have about all those other sugary things are gone. So that's my suggestion for you. So do you have any advice, I guess, on, on hydration and like, you know, how much water people should be drinking or like as far as frequency and things like that, or just... I think you guys should have like one of those like Nalgene or Hydro Flask bottles and like, and let's just say you don't have that bottle, but something similar mm. or even the bottle that Aris has right there, you'd probably go through like eight of those a day. Okay. If it's that, if it's that little bottle and then like six, at least six to eight of those a day, you'd be surprised. Like anyone who's like, man, I wonder if I don't drink enough water. You absolutely do not drink enough water. <laughs> if you have to think that you don't drink enough water, you don't drink enough water. Yeah. Um, and the biggest, the biggest thing I can tell you about drinking water is if you don't have a bottle on standby, well, if you don't have a bottle on standby, you don't drink enough water hundred percent. That's another one. Um, but if you have one, it will help you drink significantly more water. You're going to look at it and you're just going to just out of straight boredom, you're going to drink water. Okay. We have another question. We have another question. Oh, so there's one. Do you have a favorite home exercise equipment for Oh, that's for Chevy and I. Personally, I have a rower. It's been my thing recently. I'm, I'm really into rowing. Um, hoping to get into biking, though. Um, I think Chevy has a Peloton. Well, for him, I mean, yeah. luckily I have, a, I have a set of dumbbells and some stuff, oh, um, but it's really hard to buy equipment right now. But I, I also like rowing and, and doing classes at uh, the gym when it's open. Yeah. But I've been doing a lot of Peloton, like strength classes and things like that. Um, how about you, Ryan? Do you have a, a favorite at home? If I had to pick for somebody to have one piece of cardio equipment at home, I would probably pick the rower because you're getting your abs, your arms, and your legs in there. I don't want to hate on the Peloton, but like you could do a workout on an exercise bike and not have very high resistance and look like you're doing all sorts of stuff, but you're really not getting that much done. On the rower, you like really seriously have to work. Like if you yeah. have to hit a certain amount of meters or something, like the work's got, it's it just, you have to get it done. So I'm a big fan of that. If, uh, and actually, if you guys do have a rower, there's a website called C2, Concept2. And on their website, they actually have free workouts, uh, short, medium, long distance workouts. So short, I think is 20 minutes, medium, I think is 40, and then the long is like an hour plus. And they put one up every single day um, for free. So if you guys have a rower, even if it's not a Concept2, you guys can use those rowing workouts for free. Check that out. Uh, another question is, does keto really work or is it just a fad? Here's the thing. Secret. Getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> Every single diet works. They all work, right? So the most important factor is sustainability. Just like I was saying with your fitness routine, whatever is conducive to your lifestyle, you can get it done. 
is going to be the one that works for you. It could be carb cycling, it could be keto, it could be intermittent fasting, it could be the zone diet, it could be just eating very basic traditional paleo um, guidelines, right? Obviously, Aris here has kids, things change a little bit. Maybe right now they're still a little bit younger, but as they get older and they wanna eat you know, certain things, he might have a couple bites here and there and all of a sudden he's not keto anymore, right? So I'm not gonna say you should absolutely be keto, but you should, you should follow something that you can follow and is sustainable. If it's not sustainable, if you guys feel like you're ever on a challenge, like you feel like you're on a challenge, you don't feel like you're making a lifestyle change, you're gonna yo-yo back to normal. And that's the worst thing in the world because then you lose even more self-esteem and you lose even more motivation because you're like, I already tried that and it didn't work because no one should be on a challenge. You guys should be making lifestyle changes forever, right? Like if you're bad with your money, all of a sudden, you know, you start making better investments and different things like that. And it's a permanent change, right? That money's going to be sitting in there until you're like 60. So let's, let's put this exercise thing into the bank. That's going to be sitting there until you're 60. And when you're 60, hopefully you keep on going. I actually really like that analogy. I might write that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. Let's see. Uh, oh, another question here. Uh, I like yoga. It feels relaxing, but does it really burn calories or build muscle? That's an effective way to exercise at home. You can definitely burn calories stretching. Um, it's a different type of workout in my opinion that's that's the type of person who's like a little bit more mellow you know they don't they don't like to uh get they don't, they don't like the super physically active things but they want to do something uh then i think the the flexibility stuff is great i think it's better than nothing 100 percent. some of the longer sessions you can for sure burn a lot of calories yeah i've done, I've done a couple classes yeah for sure i actually like pilates i think pilates are way cooler than, than yoga What's the, what is the difference between Pilates and yoga? Pilates is like yoga with abs. Oh. Okay. And sometimes they use these things called reformers where when you're on the machine and it's basically like forcing you to be more flexible than you really are. For men, it's, it's literally, it's like middle, middle, medieval torture. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. Oh. I know in some states the gyms are open. I know you are not a coronavirus expert, a doctor, but does working out inside a gym sound like a good idea? Okay, so they tried to shut my gym down here in California a few times and I didn't close. And no, I don't think it's, a, it's bad at all. I've actually seen several articles right now where like some of these gyms are actually the cleanest places you're gonna go because there's we have so much crazy cleaning protocols. And a lot of the gyms right now are actually doing stuff outside. So if you have access to one of those gyms, that's great. I'm doing everything right now in my gym outside. And we have some people inside doing things. Okay. But I don't think you're gonna be, I think some of the restaurants nowadays are worse than a gym in my opinion. There's way more people in them. Like a Home Depot? <laughs> or the grocery, the grocery store is literally the worst place you can go. Because yeah. <laughs> even if you are sick, you have to go to the grocery store. Yeah, that's and everyone's point. going there. That's a, point. a lot more traffic. It's the, worst, it's the worst place. If you've been to the grocery store, you can go anywhere. Yeah, that's right. All right. Let's see here. Is carbonated water worse than regular water? Um, Question. I mean, Hydration. it just kind of like fills you up with gas a little bit. Like you are going to be burping a lot and kind of have like gastrointestinal problems, really. But I mean, <laughs> That's, that's really it. It's not, it's not necessarily worse. It can be worse for your teeth a little bit, but I mean, if you're asking about like sparkling water, if like, if that's like the, the root to this question, I think sparkling water is the greatest thing on earth. <laughs> <laughs> and sparkling water also doubles as like almost like a caffeinated beverage where it can actually curb your hunger as well. So actually that is a great point. What is this person's name? It's not on there. This is a great point because if you do need ways to help you curb your hunger, coffee is one of them, and carbonated water, like, uh, like sparkling water, is one of them. So those are two things I highly recommend. If you normally drink regular water, drink half of your water that day with, with sparkling water. But also have that damn bottle nearby because when you drink sparkling water, it makes you not want to drink as much water. As far as hydration, this, the, you think the carbonated water, there's no difference between that and still? 
in terms of hydration, no. A lot of times, actually, the sparkling water has like more minerals and stuff in it than yeah. the regular water. Okay. AKA they call it mineral water sometimes. How about green tea? Um, so a lot of people who have, uh, they get kind of like fried out receptors. They, they have too much caffeine in their diet, but they drink a shit ton of green tea. You can still kind of burn yourself out. Like everyone should go on like, you know, a week every now and again where they don't have caffeine. I know that's terrifying, but like right. all of a sudden your, your stimulus to, to caffeine will be so great. And like when you go to work, it will literally just be laser focused. But when you're used to it all the time, if you can drink a cup of coffee right now and go to bed, you drink too much coffee. I take it back. You have too much caffeine. Maybe you drink workouts and teas and all these different things. Is green tea bad for you? Absolutely not. It's great. Um, it's a diuretic. You're going to pee a lot. Um, yeah. Not a whole lot to say there. It's, it's fine. Um, so one thing um, I, I was wondering if maybe you could talk about, just because I personally was interested, is like, you know, like I, we talked about before, you know, you have like the challenge on your website and some of those things that people can get involved in. Um, would you mind talking about that real quick and just kind of some, some of the things you offer? Yeah. So basically what I've created is Earn Your Carbs Lifestyle. It's in my opinion, because I talk about sustainability so much, it's the easiest way to structure your calories throughout the day. So what I've done is I've realized that there's, I started with just carb cycling and you would just, and what that really means is when he, like when, when I say carb cycling, everyone's like, well, what does that mean? It basically, you just have days throughout the week where you have high carbs and days throughout the week where you have low carbs. And those high carb days, I like to call them the days that you're going to mess up anyway. And I started with that. And then a lot of people were like, well, what do you do? Like, what do you do specifically? Cause I want to look like you, or I want to eat the way you do that. Like they follow me on Instagram or something. And essentially I started creating the keto cycling guide because for me, I like to have less carbohydrates throughout the day because the less I have throughout the day and when they're around my workout, even, even less I need to think about throughout the day. I'm just going to eat this much protein, this much uh, fat and my carbs will be around my workout and I'm done. And when I think that way, I can keep the results that I have so much easier. And what's important to me about that is I can travel and do it. I can do it at home. I can do it at my mom's house. You know, I can do it anywhere I go because I know that I have this amount of carbs and this amount of protein and fat for the rest of the day. And if I vary just a little bit, I'll be fine. So now the way that the, the challenge is orchestrated is you either pick the carb cycling or you pick the keto cycling. If you want to gain muscle, the carb cycling one's the way to go. People absolutely need to eat more carbohydrates if they want to gain muscle, but you can burn fat on both. Each guide has a custom calculator built in. I had some fancy person in Palo Alto make that for me. And uh, <laughs> that's where you guys are pretty close to. So I live in Orange County, California. I live in Newport Beach, if you guys know what that is. But uh, anyway, the calculator essentially takes all these numbers, you know, your, your, how young you are, uh, your workout activity level and different things. And then we just plug them in and it gives you your numbers. And then essentially I will tell you which foods I think are more favorable and less favorable. And that's really it. Uh, and then during that time, I have everyone take a photo in the beginning, take a photo at the end. The top three people that I like the most, there is no first, second, third. I just like the top three. They get $1,000 cash. Um, they have up to 12 weeks. So the first 30 days, the best three photos get 1000 bucks. They have 12 weeks total to give me a before and after photo that I like enough where I can post it and I give them their money back. And then... Throughout that time, I give them a workout book of choice. So I have all these different types of eBooks and whether they are body weight only or dumbbell only or kettlebells only or whatever, I have it. And then also you get access to that app that I showed you. You get a month of that for free. And you also get access to my group. So the Earn Your Carbs Lifestyle group on Facebook. It's not just for the challenge. You get access to that group forever. And I go in there every two weeks and I do live Q and A's. So I'll have people in there who ask questions from a year ago and I'll have people who ask questions about the current challenge, which I'm actually going to do today at 4 PM and they can ask whatever they want. It's just like this. And I'm always on there and they have access to that forever. And, uh, yeah, the entire thing, like you get all of that stuff and it's only $99, but yeah, it's essentially, you know, you making a commitment to do something. I like to tell people that 
a 30 day challenge is more of like a 30 days for you to start making, you know, better decisions and start like, just kick yourself in the butt a little bit and hopefully they become lifestyle choices and not a challenge. Mm -hmm. Like I said previously. Yeah. That's basically what the earn requires lifestyle is all about. If you guys are on social media, you've probably seen it at some point. I, it, it's literally one of the biggest challenges in the world right now. Let's see. Does another question, does exercise help boost your immune system? A thousand percent. Yeah. In fact, like people who are super, super fit have, it's like, I think they said it's like 99.9% .9 chance that if you got COVID, like nothing would even happen to you. And as an example, I have six coaches in my gym. This is my gym here, Chalk. And, um, out of those six, five of them had COVID and <laughs> at one point or another, <laughs> that goes back to the question of like, should I go to the gym? And they're like, oh my God, terrifying. But <laughs> <laughs> essentially one of the coaches got it and then kind of gave it to all the other coaches because we all like hug each other every day and this and that. <laughs> 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 I shut the, as soon as it happened, I shut the gym down for two weeks. We came back, everything's fine. Anyway, um, when that happened, five out of the six people had it, and only one of them had a slight fever, and everybody else had absolutely zero symptoms at all. So the person with the slight fever was like, I think I have it. They went and got a test. They had it. I made everybody else get tested. They all had it. They got tested two weeks later, and some of them still had it. Some of them didn't, and then we all came back to work after like two and a half weeks. But during that time, because they were so fit, literally almost none of them even had symptoms at all. Did you I literally think about that while I'm on my bike. Like when I'm riding my bike or I'm in the gym, I'm like literally thinking about fighting coronavirus in my head. I'm like, I want to, I want to be so fit that like this thing gets inside me and it's like, I can't, this guy's too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's great motivation. If, if that's some motivation for you guys while you're on your walk, like, yeah, I'm too much. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> whatever it is, like keep that energy going. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> let's see all right. uh and let's see are there any other questions here that are going to pop up last minute yeah, you guys are welcome to ask any question i'm not you, you can't make me uh well, we got over here. a compliment you got a great yeah. webinar there yeah that's uh, great thanks so that much, was ryan, ryan I, I guess uh i think we're probably all good here but thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us i know you're really busy right now um very very appreciative uh i'll circulate the copy of the deck and it has a link to your website and stuff in case people are interested in, in following up. But thank you again very much. Yeah, of course, of course. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's it then. Thank you everyone again for- uh, I think we're all